Okay, in the following tutorial, we are going to take a look at the Inspector Palette and learn a little bit about the Inspector Palette. Uh, there's just too much you can do with the Inspector Palette to cover it all in one tutorial. It's a very, very versatile and very useful palette. So, before I actually show you what the pet user, the Inspector Palette, excuse me, is for, I'm going to show you how to get the Inspector Palette. And you can get that by coming up here under Window Inspector. This is the Inspector Palette. Now, the Inspector Palette is a content sensitive palette and that's very nice because content sensitive means that depending on what content you have selected it displays different options okay it gives you different options if you have an image selected than if you have a table selected and it's very much like uh, flash or dreamweavers properties panels or uh, let's say photoshop and now indesign cs2's toolbars okay so those are just a couple programs that if you're used if you are acquainted i guess i should say with any of them um, You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about as far as content sensitivity. All right, and I'm going to show you what I mean here by clicking on this index.html file. When I click on it, you can see we get the inspector palette. And right here, right off the bat, we can change the name of our file to anything we want. And I'm actually going to mess it up just to show you something a little bit later on. I'm going to name this dollar sign, exclamation mark, space, capital, let's say R, Y, R, I don't know. But we're just going to name it dollar sign exclamation mark space not an underscore a space and a capital R and it also has some label and publish options and it also tells you when your file was created when it was last modified all the way down to the very minute it was modified and the actual size of your file and that's it for the inspector palette when you click on a file unless you look up here at the top you can see that if I can get my inspector palette to stay still, you can see that there are actually three additional tabs. So there are four tabs total for when you click on a file. And the next tab is the name tab. And this tab is going to tell me if by giving this file this crazy name I violated any naming constraints. And of course, if you're at all acquainted with web design, you'll know that you're not supposed to have spaces, uh, capital letters are not good things, and all kinds of crazy symbols are not good either. Okay, so that's going to tell me that I shouldn't you really use that name. So I'm going to come back here right off the bat and just change that back to index.html because that's just good naming policy. And it's still telling me it violates the constraints, and that is because you just have to deselect down here and reselect, and if all goes well, there we go. It now matches the selected constraints. Sometimes it gets a little funky and doesn't reload quickly, so just watch yourself. Um, the next tab is the content tab, and the content tab is very cool. It is a thumbnail or a little preview of that file okay and this even works with images let me open up my images pal and I'm just going to go to the header pic.jpg and there we go it's gonna give me a preview which I can obviously stretch out to the side here okay it's the entire thing there so let's go back to that index.html page that I had selected and content this is good when you have tons of files and you just want to quickly brush through them and you know see what he, you know see what everything looks like um, you can also do that by changing this the way you view the settings uh, or excuse me the site window here uh, but I'm not going to get into that right now As a matter of fact I believe I touch on that in um, a tutorial on the site window the last tab here in the inspector palette for selecting pages because remember it's content sensitive so it's going to change with everything we select literally everything we select is the page title and you can see I have given this a page title of inspector and you, if you can see I don't know if you can see on that tiny video um, that there's a capital I and I can use a capital I I can use an underscore I can use a space I can use all kinds of crazy symbols if I want why well because let me show you what the title is for those of you who don't know I can preview this in a web browser real quick and when the web browser pops up take a look at the top left hand corner here that is your name title it's not the name of your page it's just called the title of your page so it shows up in the top very top bar of your web browser so that's what that is you can name that whatever you want alright so let's take a look at some of the other stuff the inspector palette can do I'm going to come over here to the bridge I'm just gonna drag this file right into my images folder here I'm just gonna drop it right in there minimize the bridge and I'm going to open up this index.html page. And I'm going to slide it over here. There we go. Our inspector palette is going to sit right here. And I'm going to come over here into the tool box. And I'm going to grab an image object. And I'm just going to place it anywhere. I'm just going to place it right there. Okay. And now this image object 
I need to actually place an image in it. Well, you can use the inspector palette to place images. Let's just take a look here at the inspector palette. With that image object selected, okay, this image object, image placeholder, oops, selected, we can set a source file for this. And this is the image, the location of the image on the web server, okay? So I'm going to, you can just type it in here manually. You can actually browse for files in your hard drive. Or you can use the pick whip, which is this little thing here. You actually click it and drag it, and it gives you this visual thing coming out. And I think it's called the pick whip because if you let go of it, it kind of just whips back into place. I don't know if you can see that on the screen recording, but if you're using Go Live, you certainly know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to target the images folder, and I can see image1.jpg, and that's what I want. So I'm going to move over that, and I'm just going to let go. And you can see it's placed that image in my page. All right, now... When you've placed an image, I'm going to select that image, and you can see that the inspector palette shows me. Here's the location of that image on your web server. Here's the width, the height, even the alignment. You can set an alternate text, which is always good to do. Say movie film, and this is, incidentally, the uh, featured photo of week 9 on tutvid.com. I believe it's week 9. Tutvid.com, by the way, is the site that provide you with these tutorials if you haven't realized that. Um, but you ought to go check them out, www.tutvid.com. It's my site, so of course I'm going to promote it. Alright, so here in the alternate text box, we're going to say movie film. There we go, movie film uh, photo. Okay, why well, I've put a comma in there. I don't know. So, movie film photo, and you can give it a name and an ID. But that's not it. We look up here, and we have two more tabs. We have the More tab. And we can actually set a border for this photo. And I'm going to. I'm going to set a 15-pixel border. Okay, and you can see a black border shows up. And that's all we're going to look at in the More tab. There's a bunch of other stuff in there you can play with. You can also link the image. And what I mean by linking the image is this is a regular link. This isn't just linking up the image so that it actually displays the image. This is a hyperlink, like a link to another page uh, within your site or a link outside of your site. Okay, something that goes to some other site. So in this case, I'm just going to link this to tutvid.com. Okay? And you can set your target to whatever you want. You can give it a title and a, a name and ID as well. Now, the problem with giving your image a border is, as you just saw, the border turns blue when you link it. Okay? So just as a quick revealer, if you want to put a border on a photo, your best bet's going to be use CSS. So I'm going to uncheck border here to get rid of that just because it looks so bad. Actually, I'm going to check border and I'm going to set it to zero because that gets rid of the entire colored border. If you just uncheck border, you still get like a one pixel blue border. It's just bad. Okay, so... What we've just gone over is really the basics of the inspector palette. Now, bear in mind that everything you select, if you select uh, a QuickTime movie object, that's going to have different options. If you select text, you're just going to have a link uh, tab. Just play with it, really. Open up a site you have and click everything on the site. Click everything everywhere, all over your screen. <laughs> And everything within your Go Live site is going to display something in the inspector palette, um, with the exception of very little. I can't honestly even think of something right off here off the top of my head um, that would not display anything in the inspector palette. But that's not the point of this tutorial. So with that in mind, I am going to leave you. Um, I hope you learned. I, I I hope you have learned something. Um, and I uh, hope you'll go check the site out. That's www.tutvid.com. I will bring that site up real real quick here um, but really that's the basic of the inspector palette and there's so much you can do with the inspector palette it's absolutely insane and I just really do not have enough time in the tutorial and I don't want to bore you with everything that there is to know about the inspector palette but this is the site you're looking for that's tutvid.com um, lots of great stuff on the site go check it out and I hope you go watch some of my other video tutorials and I hope you've enjoyed this one so I'll see you next time